All praises to the Most High God. So tonight's topic is called, No One Has Seen God at Any Time. No one has seen God at any time. That's tonight's topic. Let's open up with the book of Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Let's start there. Come on. Genesis chapter 1 verses 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth of every and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So now at this point, the most High God is having is is coming up with a concept of creating uh, creating the earth and creating mankind to put mankind on earth to inhabit it. You understand? So at this point, this is the creation account. All right. Read verse 26 again. The book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 26. And God Go said, ahead. let us make man in our image mm -hmm. after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So now what you're seeing here says, let us make man in our image. This man is making reference to is mankind. Give me the book of Tobit 8 verse 6. Tobit chapter 8 and verse 6. The book of Tobit chapter 8 verse 6. Go ahead. Thou madest Adam and gavest him Eve his wife for an helper and stay. Go ahead. Of them came mankind. You see that thing? Of them came mankind. Because Adam, is, Adam was created first. And then mm. Eve was created out of Adam and everyone else. You understand? But at this point, you see what the Lord did? It says, of them came mankind. So that's what we just read in the book of Genesis 1, verse 26. Read verse 6 again. The book of Tobit, chapter 8, verse 6. Thou madest Adam and givest him Eve, his wife, for and help, for and help her and stay. Of Read. them came mankind. Come on. That was said, it is not good that man should be alone. Let us make unto him an aid like unto himself. Let's go back to Genesis now. Chapter 1 verse 26 again. The book of Genesis. Chapter 1 verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image. Stop right there. Um, let us. Let us make man in our image. So what is this letting you know? This is letting you know that the Moses God has an image of what he looks like. You understand? It says, let us make man in our image. The us here is not just talking about a singular entity. It's talking about the Moses God, Christ, the angels, and spirits. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of First Kings. Okay, give me First Kings. First Kings chapter 22. First Kings chapter 22. Read verse 19. First book of Kings chapter 22 verses 19. Go ahead. And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne. Mm -hmm. And all the hosts of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. So now this is Micaiah, the prophet, he's saying, he's seeing the Lord sitting on his throne and on his left, he saw the host and on his right, he saw an host. You understand? The host that he saw, those are angels. So when he says, let us, he's not just talking about, he's not just the Mosai. No, it's the Mosai, Christ, the angels. You understand? That's us, the plural, us. Let us make men in our image you understand watch this give me give me the book of hebrews chapter one give me hebrews one and verse seven the book of hebrews chapter one verse seven go ahead and the angels he saith. the book of hebrews chapter one verse seven Come and on. of the angels he saith. 
who make it his angel spirit and his ministers a flame of fire. You see that thing? He says he make it his angel spirit and his ministers a flame of fire. So now what he's letting you know here, the earth is goes into angels and spirits. You understand? Because the spirit is making reference to, is talk about the, the spirit that was created before the world was. Because all of us, we was in the spirit realm before we was put on earth the way that we look now. You understand? But all of us was in the spiritual realm before we was translated here upon this earth. It was the Most High God, Christ, angels, and spirits. Okay, read that again, verse 7. The book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 7. Go ahead. And the end of the angels, he said, who maketh his angels spirits and his uh -huh. ministers a flame of fire. And his ministers a flame of fire. Give me Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 18. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 18. Second book of Ezra chapter 9, verses 18. Read. And now, when I prepared the world, mm -hmm. which was not yet made. You see that even, part? Which, which was not yet made. When I prepared the world, which was not yet made. This is in the spiritual realm. You understand? This is in the spirit realm. Before we was put on this earth. That's what Ezra is, is giving us here. This is, this is some heavy stuff that's coming out here. Read what you got. Come on. Second book of Ezra, chapter 9, verse 18. Read. And now, when I prepared the world, which was not yet made. Come on. Even for them to dwell in that now live. Meaning those spirits. Read. No man spake against me. You see that thing? No man spake against him. Because in the spirit realm, everybody knew what their job was. What role they were going to fulfill. What lot they were going to fall in. You understand? Watch this. Keep going. Verse 19. For then everyone obeyed. You see that thing right there? For then everyone obeyed. In the spirit realm, everybody agreed what their role was. Read. But now the manners of them which are created in this world that is made are corrupted by a perpetual seed. That perpetual seed through Adam. Go ahead. And by a law which is unsearchable, read themselves. So now when we, was, when we came on this earth, we read ourselves of the laws of God. You understand? But in the spirit realm, everyone obeyed what our role was going to be. Watch this. Give me the book of Daniel. Okay. Daniel. You know what? Give me Jeremiah 1 and 5 first. Then we go to Daniel. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. Everyone obeyed, he says, and for then everyone obeyed. Okay, watch this. We're still dealing with the us. Let us make men in our image. Read what you got. Jeremiah 1 verse 5. The book of Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. You see that thing? Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. When? In the spirit realm. Read. And before thou camest forth, out of the womb, I sanctify thee. I sanctify thee. He says, I, Jeremiah, before you, I formed thee in the belly, I knew you already. When? In the spirit realm. What we read in 2 Ezra 9, verse 18 and 19. Go ahead. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. You see that thing? That was his lot. His lot was to be a prophet. Guess what? Our Lord is to be prophets of the Lord. We are the sons of the living God. Watch this. Give me Daniel now, chapter 12. Daniel chapter 12, might be verse 13. Watch this. Let me see. Daniel. Daniel chapter 12, verse 13. Read what you got. The book of Daniel, chapter 12. Verses 13. Come on. But go thou thy way till the end be. Mm -hmm. For thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. You, you see that thing? It says, you're going to what? It says, for thou shalt rest. Meaning Daniel is going to grow old. He's going to die. You understand? And go back to the father. He says, and 
and in thy, in thy lot at the end of the days, meaning Daniel will be back. But what was his lot? His lot is being a prophet. You understand? So in the end of days, Daniel will be back. But guess what? Daniel, just like Jeremiah, just like all of us, we was all in the spirit realm. That's why it says everyone obeyed. You understand? That's the us. Let us make men in our image. Watch this. Give me the book of Colossians 1. Okay, Colossians 1 verse 15 real quick. Colossians chapter 1 verse 15. You know what? Read verse 17. Let's get to the point. Colossians chapter 1 verse 17. Read that. The book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 17. Go ahead. And he is before all things. Mm -hmm. And by him all things consist. He says be, be, is, he is before all things. Who is this making reference to? Jesus the Christ. Read that again, verse 17. The book of Colossians, chapter 1, verse 17. And mm -hmm. he is before all things. And by him, all things consist. Meaning Christ was the first begotten of the Father. He was the Father's creation. The Father's first creation. The first thing that the most High God created was Christ. Christ was the first creation. The only begotten. The firstborn of every creature. You understand? He is before all things. And by him, all things consist. Meaning, all things was made by him. You understand? That's what this is going into. So, the most high God was there. Watch this. Give me the book of Daniel 7 verse 9. Daniel chapter 7 verse 9. Read that. The book of Daniel chapter 7 verse 9. Go ahead. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. Mm -hmm. And the ancient of days did sit. Stop right there. That's the most high. The ancient of days is the heavenly father. He is older than days. He is outside of time. You understand? He is older than time. That's why it says the ancient of days did sit. The ancient of days. So the most high God is called the ancient of days because he's older than days. He is older than time. So when he says, let us go back to Genesis 1 now. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. The book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 26. And go God ahead. said, let us make man in our image. You see that thing? Let us, meaning himself, Christ, the angels, and spirits. You understand? Read. In our image. Mm -hmm. after our likeness you see that thing after our likeness meaning the way we look that's how we're gonna make men in our image you understand on earth right after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fall of the air and over Read. the cattle and over all the earth of and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Go ahead. So God created man in his own image. Mm -hmm. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. You see that thing? It says, so God created man in his own image. So what this, this is letting you know that the most high God, he's got an image of what he looks like. You understand? Because if God does not have an image, how did he make man in his own image if he doesn't have an image? You see that thing? So obviously he does have an image. Okay, watch this. Give me now, give me the book of John, chapter 4, verse 24. Watch this. John, chapter 4, verse 24. Because whenever we teach on the streets, our people will be saying, no, but God is a spirit. Okay, John 4, verse 24. Read what you got. The book of John, chapter 4, verse 24. Come on. God is a spirit. Mm -hmm. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. He says God is a spirit, right? God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now watch this. Give me, because God is a spirit, yes. But this spirit has, an, has a body. You understand? We are spirits. 
You understand? This spirit has a body. You understand? Read that again, verse 24. The book of John, chapter 4, verse 24. Go God ahead. is a spirit. Mm -hmm. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now watch this. Give me Daniel 7, verse 9. He says, God is a spirit. Yes, he's a spirit. But this spirit has a body. Before you get that, actually, give me 1 Corinthians 15, verse 39. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 13. Let's read that first. Okay. First book of Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 39. Read. All flesh is not the same flesh. Mm -hmm. But there is one kind of flesh of men. Man, read on, on earth, come on. There's one another, flesh, one kind. Hold on. There's one kind of flesh of men. Men on earth. Go ahead. Another flesh of beasts. Mm -hmm. Another of fishes. And another of birds. Read. They are also celestial bodies. Stop right there. They are also celestial bodies. These are heavenly bodies. You understand? These are angelic bodies. Where that's, that's where the most High God is. You understand? The type of bodies they got is not the type of bodies that we got. You understand? Our bodies are not immortal. But the celestial bodies, they have what? They have immortal bodies. You understand? Read. And bodies terrestrial. And bodies terrestrial, meaning earthly, terrain. That's talking about us now here on earth. Read. But the glory of the celestial is one. The glory of the celestial is one, meaning angelic, heavenly. Read. And the glory of the terrestrial is another. And the glory of the terrestrial is another. So now, go back to John now, 4 verse 24. John chapter 4 verse 24. Watch this. The book of John, chapter 4, verses 24. Go ahead. God is a spirit. Mm -hmm. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So now we just go through reading that celestial and terrestrial bodies are not the same. You understand? Well, well, watch this. Give me Daniel 7, verse 9. Let's see the image that the Lord, the image of the Most High, what he looked like. Because it says he made man in his own image, in his own likeness. Okay? Daniel 7, verse 9. Read that. The book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 9. Go ahead. I beheld till the thrones are cast down. Mm -hmm. And the ancient of days did sit. So the thrones is making reference to the kingdoms that, that are ruling on this earth. You understand? From the time of Daniel unto this day. You've got Iran. You understand? Under Ayatollah and so forth. You've got uh, Russia under Putin. You've got America under um, Joe Biden and so forth. That's the kingdoms that are ruling on this earth. You, have, you, have, you understand? You've got King Jampoon of, of uh, North Korea and so forth. Those are the kingdoms that is making reference to the thrones that was going to be cast down when the Lord returns. Okay, read verse 9 again. The book of Daniel. Chapter 7, verse 9. Read. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, mm -hmm. and the ancient of days did sit. The ancient of days is the most high God, and it says he was sitting. In order for you to sit, you need to have a body. The most high God, the type of body he got, is a celestial body. You understand? Read. Whose garment was white as snow. He was wearing a garment. In order for you to put clothes on, you need to have a body to put clothes on. Read. And the hair of his head, mm -hmm. like the pure wool. So now he's got a head. A head is attached to a body. He is not a floating puff of smoke. You understand? Like the Christianity like to make us believe. No, no, no. He's got a body. That's why he was able to put clothes on. He's got a hair on his head. You understand? Like the pure wool. Woolly hair. Hair of Negroes. You understand? So there's a black man up there. 
You understand? With white woolly hair. Go ahead. His throne was like the fiery flame. Mm -hmm. And his wheels as burning fire. The wheels is talking about his transportation. His chariot. You understand? That's the wheels. L look, at, look at even the language that is being used here. You understand? This book is ours. Look at the language. It says his wheel. Check out my wheels, bro. My wheels. It says his wheels as burning fire. His wheels, he uses chariot. You understand? That's his wheels. My point is, yes, God is a spirit, but that spirit has a body, a celestial body, not a terrestrial one. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book. Give me the book of... Hmm, give me Revelation 4, verse 2. Give me the book of Revelation chapter 4, verse 2. We're still dealing with when it says, let us make men in our image. You understand? I'm giving you the image of the Mosai right here. What he looked like. He made us in his likeness. You understand? Watch this. Revelation 4, verse 2. Let's start there. This is John the Revelator on the island of Patmos. This is what the things that the Lord was showing to John. Read what you got. Revelation 4, verse 2. Come on. The book of Revelation, chapter 4, verse 2. Read. And immediately I was in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And behold, a throne was set in heaven. Read. And one sat on the throne. It says one was sitting on the throne. So in order for this man to sit on this throne, he needs to have a body to sit on the throne. Read. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper. Like a jasper. A jasper is a brown stone. You understand? Brass. It's a brown stone. Read on. And a sardine stone. A sardine stone is another brown stone. Okay, come on. And there was a rainbow round about the throne. In sight like unto an emerald. You see that in sight like unto an emerald. Emerald is what? Emerald is green. Now watch this. What I want to show you here is that it says jasper. It says sardine. So it says the way he looked, meaning his complexion, was like a sardine and a jasper stone. So there's a black man up there. The prophets are all saying the same thing. There's no contradiction. John is saying it. Daniel is saying it. You understand? Yes, God is a spirit, but that spirit has a celestial body. And that celestial body has color on it, has complexion. And that complexion is like a jasper and a sardine stone. You understand? He's a black man. That's what the prophets are teaching us. You understand? So yes, God does have a body. He's got an image of what he looks like. You understand? Now, go back to John now. 4 verse 24 again. The book of John. Chapter 4 verse 24. Go ahead. God is a spirit. Mm -hmm. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Watch this. Now, give me Colossians 1. Colossians chapter 1 verse 12. Colossians chapter 1 verse 12. Let's read that. The book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 12. Giving Read. thanks unto the Father, which made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Read verse 12 again. The book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 12. Read. Giving thanks unto the Father, mm -hmm. which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. So now he says we must give thanks unto the Most High, the Father now, the Most High God, God the Father, which hath made us meet, meaning good, to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Meaning what? In the truth. He made us part of this glorious gospel of his son, Jesus the Christ, the Messiah. Okay, come on. Who had delivered us from the power of darkness. Meaning from sin. He delivered us from sin. Go ahead. And it translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. He translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Be guess what? Watch this. Give me Romans 8. Okay. He translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Because guess what? 
the kingdom belongs to Jesus the Christ. He's going to share that kingdom that his father is going to give unto him with us. We just have to endure until the end. Watch this. Give me Romans chapter 8 now. Romans chapter 8 verse 16. Watch this. The book of Romans chapter 8 verses 16. Read. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit. Come on. That we are the children of God. So the spirit is what's written in this book. The laws of God. The laws of God, there's laws, statutes, and commandments and judgments for breaking these laws. Because of the judgment, we can see that the laws was given to us and we broke them. Hence the punishment. Hence the judgment. Hence the curses. Slavery, colonization, forced migration, apartheid, Jim Crow. You understand? So on and so forth. That's how we know that we are indeed the sons of the living God. Go ahead. And if, and if children, then heirs, mm heirs -hmm. of God, Come and on. joint heirs with Christ. You see that thing? Joint heirs with Christ. Because he translated, you translate the kingdom of his dear son. You understand? He translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. You see that thing? When he delivered us from darkness, sin. Now we are keeping the commandments. We are coming out of the philosophies that we've been taught in these lands. You understand? Now we are applying the laws of the Most High God to our lives. So that when the Lord returns, we can get the chance at redemption, deliverance on that day. Read that again, verse 17. The book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 17. And if Go children, ahead. then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Mm -hmm. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also, that we may be also glorified together. You see, I think in the kingdom, when the Lord returns, when we become those joint heirs with him in his father's kingdom. Let's go back to Colossians now, chapter 1. Colossians 1, verse 13. The book of Colossians, chapter 1, verse 13. Read. What delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. He translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. You understand? From the time when we were under old, the old covenant, we were what? We were adopted from the old into the new. So we can get the chance to receive the kingdom by keeping the commandments under who? Under Jesus the Christ. Read on. In whom we have redemption through his blood. You see that thing? In whom we have redemption through his blood. Meaning Christ's sacrifice redeemed us from the old covenant to the new covenant, which is where we're at now. Read. Even the forgiveness of sins. You see that thing? Even the forgiveness of, of sins. To bring all 12 tribes together as one. Come on. Who in the image of the invisible God. Who is, who is the image. Read verse 15 again. The book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 15. Read. Who is the image of the invisible God. Come on. The firstborn of every creature. You see that thing? The firstborn of every, of every creature because Christ was the one that was created first before everything else was made. He was the first creation of the Father. So, but he says, who is the image of the invisible God? Meaning Christ is the image of the invisible God. Keep going. Verse 16. We're going to come back to verse 15. For by him were all things created. You see that thing? By him, Christ, all things was created. You understand? Come on. The book of Colossians 1 verse 16. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth. Visible. That thing? So all things was created that are in heaven, meaning what? The stars, the sun, moons, the galaxies and all of that, the different planets. Christ is the one that did that. You understand? It says... It says, by him all things were created that are in heaven, you understand, and that are in the earth, the mountains, the oceans, the creeping things, the fowls, and so forth, the people upon the earth. Go ahead. Visible and invisible. You see, the things that we can see and the things that we cannot see. Go ahead. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities 
or powers. All things were created by him and for him. You see that thing? That's how special Christ is. He says all things were created by him and for him. You see that thing? So now he was from the beginning. You understand? That's why he says, I'm the Alpha and Omega. Because he was from the beginning. You understand? He was from the beginning. Now watch this. Keep going. Verse 17. And he is before all things. Mm -hmm. And by him, all things consist. You see that thing? And he says, he is before all things. Everything that was created in the heaven above, you understand? In, on the earth, underneath and on the earth, the oceans, the mountains. Listen, things visible and not visible to us. Guess what? All those things was created. They were created by him. And he was before them all. Because he made them at the command of the father. You understand? Watch this. Jump back up to verse 15 now. Colossians 1 verse 15. The book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 15. Mm -hmm. Who is the image of the visible God? None. Read that again. The book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 15. Who mm -hmm. is the image of the invisible God? There we go. Come on. The firstborn of every creature. So Christ is the image of the invisible God. So he is that image of the invisible God. The one that we was not allowed to see. Christ is the image of the invisible God. But watch this. Give me John 1 verse 15. Okay. The book of St. John. John chapter 1 verse 15. Let's read that. The book of John chapter 1 verses 15. Go ahead. John bear witness of him mm -hmm. and cried saying, this was he of whom I speak. He that cometh after me is preferred before me. Read. For he was before me. Read verse 15 again. The book of John chapter 1 verse 15. Go ahead. John bear witness of him and cried saying, this was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me. For Read. he was before me. So what you want to see here is that this was he of whom I spake. Because when John's ministry, when John was teaching, watch this. Give me Matthew chapter 3 real quick. Matthew 3. Matthew chapter 3 and verse... Read verse 13. Matthew 3 verse 13. You know what? The start of verse 11. Matthews. Start of verse 11. Then we're going to read down. The book of Matthew, chapter 3, verse 11. Mm -hmm. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. Go ahead. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. You see that thing? But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. Go ahead. Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. You see what he's saying? He says, I cannot even feel his shoes. The one that's coming after me, I can't feel his shoes. Talk about Christ. Read. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. You see that thing? He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. That fire right there is talking about what we read about in verse 12. But let's go back. Okay. Let's go back to um, John chapter 1 verse 15. The book of John. Chapter 1, verse 15. Mm -hmm. John bear witness of him and cry, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me. Come on. For he was before me. You see that part right there? He says, He that cometh after me, guess what? He that cometh after me is preferred before me. For he was before me. What did John understand about Christ? He understood that Christ was before. He goes all the way back. He was the first of every bit of God's creation. He was the first creation of the Most High. John understood this thing. That's why it says, he is preferred before me, before he was before me. But John was older than Christ. You understand? When we're talking about when they were born. John was born first and Christ was born after. But that's what, but here John is saying, for he was before me. Because John understood that thing. What did he understand? John 1 and 1. Watch this. 
the book of John, chapter one, verse one. Go ahead. In the beginning was the word. Mm -hmm. And the word was with God. And the word was God. You see what John is saying? He says, in the beginning, this is Genesis now, because that's what Genesis means, beginnings. He says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. You see that thing? You see the distinction? The word was with God, and the word was God. What is he saying? He's saying the same thing that we just read here. He says, for he was before me. You understand? He was before me. When it says the word was with God, Give me that in Revelation 19. Okay, Revelation 19 verse 13. When it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. With God. Revelation 19 verse 13. Read that. The book of Revelations, chapter 19, verses 13. Go ahead. And he was clothed with the vesture dipped in blood. Come on. And his name is called the word of God. And his name is called the word of God. Talk about Christ. He was dipped in vesture. He was what? He says he was clothed in a vesture dipped in blood. Because Christ, when he returns, he is going to do a lot of killing on this earth. Why? Because remember, we're still under the sacrificial law, if you think about it. You understand? All that tangent. Give me Revelation. Give me Romans 12 and 1. Real quick. Revelation 12 and 1. I mean, Romans 12. And one. Not, not really much has changed, really. Okay? We move from sacrificing animals and Christ became the sacrificial lamb. Guess what? Because Christ became the, the sacrificial lamb, we are the sacrifice now. You understand that? Revelation, I mean, Re Romans, Romans 12 and 1. The book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1. Go ahead. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. Mm hmm. By the mercies of God, Read. that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. Stop right there. We must present our bodies a living sacrifice. This sacrifice right here, because remember, under the old covenant, you are of animal sacrifice. In, in the animal had to be sacrificed so that you can be spared. The blood of the animal had to be, had to be spilled so your life can be spared. Now Christ came. You understand? He became the sacrificial lamb. His blood was spilled so we can be brought into the fold, right? Now, we are the sacrifice because when the Lord returns, when it says he was dipped in vesture, he was, he was clothed in a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the word of God. Where did the blood come from? Because we're not sacrificing animals no more. We are the sacrifice now. So guess who is coming to kill? The people on earth. That's why it says he was dressed, he was clothed in a vesture dipped in blood. Whose blood? The people. So in order for us not to be that sacrifice on that day, guess what? We, how we must present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Next part of that verse. How must, how must we present it? Come on. Holy. Holy. We must present our bodies as a living sacrifice. How? Holy. You understand? Read. Acceptable unto God. It must be acceptable. It must be a holy sacrifice. You understand? It must be holy, meaning it must be separate, separated by what? By the laws of God. Okay, Romans 7 verse 12. Romans 7 verse 12 real quick. The book of Romans chapter 7 verse 12. Come on. Wherefore, the law is holy. The law is holy, right? And the commandment holy. Come on. And just and good. You see that thing? So how are we going to present our bodies uh, as a living sacrifice? We must present it holy. According to what? The law. It says, for, for the law is holy. And the commandments are holy. So in order for that, for our living, for us, as that living sacrifice, to be an, a, a sacrifice that is acceptable to God by Jesus Christ, guess what needs to happen? We need to present our bodies holy according to the law. We must say, be sanctified with the laws of the Most High. That's how we're going to be separate and be made clean by the word of the Most High. Go back to Romans 12, verse 1 again. The book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1. Mm -hmm. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, 
by the mercies of God that we really? present your bodies a living sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You see that thing? So guess what? Yes. The sacrificial law mm -hmm, it don't, it's not really necessarily done away with in terms of, it's not necessarily done away with. We're still under the covenant. The only difference now is we, our bodies now is the sacrifice now. That living sacrifice. How do we do it? That means now, guess what you must do? You must sacrifice what? The last that you have. That's why it says you must present your body a living sacrifice. So what, what must you sacrifice? Give me Sarah 18 verse 30 real quick. This is what you must sacrifice. Okay. Sarah chapter 18 verse 30. We what you got. The book of Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 18 verses 30. Read. Go not after thy lusts. Mm -hmm. But refrain thyself from thine appetites. You see what the Lord is saying? He says don't go after your lusts. But you must refrain. The word refrain means abstain. Abstain yourself from your appetites. You understand? Whether it be weed, whether it be sex, whether it be porn, whatever, whether it be alcohol and so forth and so on and so forth, lying, deceit, and all. You must sacrifice. You must present your body a living sacrifice. So these are the things that you need to sacrifice. You must be willing to sacrifice these things in order for your body to be acceptable unto the Lord. You must sacrifice the, the, the prostitute that you used to sleep with. You must prostitute the, the, the cigarette that you used to, you used to smoke. You must be willing to sacrifice those things. Meaning what? You must repent from doing them. That's how you present your body as a living sacrifice. Those are the things that you must be willing to sacrifice in order for your body to be holy and acceptable unto the Most High. Okay, go back to Revelation now. Chapter 19, verse 13. The book of Revelations, chapter 19, verse 13. Great. And he was clothed with the vesture dipped in blood. Come on. And his name is called the word of God. You see that thing? He was clothed in a vesture dipped in blood. His name was called the word of God. Guess what? The, he didn't just take his garment and just go and dip it in a pool of blood. No, he didn't do that. He didn't just take all his clean garment and say, okay, I think I'm just going to dip it in blood and pull it out and put it on. That will make no sense. You understand? So the blood that is on his garment is coming from the killing that he was doing. Give me that in Zephaniah real quick. Watch this. Okay. Give me the book of Zephaniah. Zephaniah chapter 1. Okay. It's not part of my notes, so I'm shooting from the hip. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 8. Read verse 8. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 1, verse 8. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice. You see that thing? In the day of the Lord's sacrifice. So, guess what? In order for a sacrifice to go down, something must be put to death. The day of the Lord's sacrifice, that's when the Lord returns. That's why it says he was clothed in a vesture dipped in blood. So what, what is the sacrifice? The people is going to be the sacrifice on that day because they are going to be put to death if they have if they've been found in the midst of sin, not having done anything to apply what is written in this book. Okay, read verse 8 again. The book is of Anaya, chapter 1 verse 8. And so, and... It shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice. You know what? Start at verse 7. Start at verse 7. The book of Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 7. Mm -hmm. Hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord God. Read. For the day of the Lord is at hand. Mm -hmm. For the Lord hath prepared a sacrifice. Read. And hath bid his guests. You see that thing? He is bidding people to the, to the what? Mm, that goes into something deeper in Matthew. But what I want to show you is that, listen, there's a sacrifice that the Lord is going to what? He's going to offer. There's a sacrifice that the Lord is going to perform when he arrives on this earth. When he descends with the clouds of heaven, he's going to perform a sacrifice. You understand? Go ahead. Verse 8. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice. 
Mm -hmm. that I will punish the princes. You see that thing? That's where the blood is going to come from. From the punishment that the Lord will perform on this earth. That's the sacrifice. Read. And the king's children. The king's children. We are the king's children. Read. And all such as are clothed with strange apparel. So this is a, this got double meanings. This is what we just read. And it says, and so, and all such as are clothed in strange apparel. But a lot of the times we use it for dress code and all, which is correct. You understand? But it goes beyond that. You understand? Okay. But what I want to show you here is that when the Lord returns, that's the sacrifice he's talking about. When he says he's, he was clothed in a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the word of God. So go back to Revelation 19 again, verse 13. Then we're going to go back to John 1 and 1. I just wanted to bring that out, okay? So we understand what's coming. Revelation 19, verse 13. Read it. The book of Revelations, chapter 19, verse 13. Go ahead. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. Mm -hmm. And his name is called the word of God. And his name is called the word of God. His name is called the word of God. Now go to John 1 and 1. Again. The book of John, chapter 1, verses 1. Read. In the beginning was the word. Mm -hmm. And the word was with God. And the word was God. You see that thing? In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. Who is the word that was with the Mosai? That's Christ. That's what we read in Revelation 19. His, his name is called the word of God. So the word that John is talking about, he is talking about Christ. You understand? Now read verse 15. John 1, 15 now. The book of John, chapter 1, verse, verse 15. Go ahead. John bear witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. Mm -hmm. He that cometh after me is prepared before me. For he was before me. Before he was before me, because... Verse 1 tells you that. It says, and the word was with God in the beginning. You understand? In the beginning. That's what he's going into. Okay, that's what he's going into. Now jump down to verse 18 now. John chapter 1 verse 18. No man hath seen God at any time. Go ahead. The only begotten son, which is, which is in the bosom of the father, he had declared him. He had, he had what? He had declared him. He had declared him, meaning he showed him unto us. Now read verse 18 once again. The book of John, chapter 1, verse 18. No man had seen God at any time. Stop right there. No man has seen God at any time. Because what you're going to find out is that when you bring out Daniel 7, verse 9, Revelation chapter 4, verse 2 and 3, this is where a Christian will take you. He said, but no man has God, seen God at any time. Read again. The book of John chapter 1 verse 18. Read. No man had seen God at any time. No man has seen God at any time. At any time, he's saying. No man has seen God at any time. Remember how the scriptures must be read. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Give me that in, in Isaiah 28. Okay. Isaiah 28. Because that's where a Christian will take you, by the way. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 10. Read it. The book of Isaiah 28, verse 10. Mm -hmm. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little, and there a little. You see that thing? So the Bible, this is how the Bible is read. This is how the Lord has commanded us to read his Bible. Precept upon precept, here a little, and there a little. So now, go back to John 1, 18. Read it again. The book of John, chapter 1, verse 18. Go ahead. No man had seen God at any time. Mm -hmm. The only begotten son. Read. Which is in the bosom of the father. He had declared him. Now watch this. It says, no man has seen God at any time. But when you read the scriptures... There were instances where man has seen God. There are instances where man has seen God. 
You understand? That's why I tell you, brothers, do your chapters and all that. You understand? When we bring this offer, when you ask me, ask me questions, because some of you like to be deep. Deep dummies. Don't be a deep dummy. Just read the history. Okay? Watch this. Give me Second John verse 3. Second John verse 3. Watch this. Second book of John verse 3. Mm -hmm. Grace be with you. Mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. So now he's saying this Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. Guess what? Watch this. What I want to show you here is this. Okay? It says, nobody has seen God at any time. Right? Read verse 3 again. Second book of John, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Grace be with you. Read. Mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. So now he's telling you, he's giving you separation. He says, God the Father. Okay. God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. So God the Father. We've got God the Father and God the Son. What do I mean by that? Give me Isaiah 9 and 6 real quick. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. We have God the Father, which is the most High God. You understand? And we have God the Son. Okay? Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Read it. The book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6. Go ahead. For unto us a child is born. Mm -hmm. Unto us a son is given. A what? A son is given. A son is given. So a child is born, a son is given unto Israel. Go ahead. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. That's the 12 tribes of Israel. Read. And, he, and his name shall be called Wonderful. Wonderful, that's one of his names. Read on. Counselor. Counselor, that's another name of his. Read. The mighty God. The what? The mighty God. The mighty God. So this son, you understand, this son that is given unto us, this child that is born that is given unto us, guess what he says? One of his name is called the mighty God. Read. The everlasting father. The what? The everlasting father. The everlasting father. Because Christ was from the beginning. The Lord created, the most High God created Christ from the beginning. From the beginning. You understand? His first creation was Christ. You understand? So that's why it says the everlasting father. Read. The prince of peace. The prince of peace. Meaning Shiloh. The prince of peace. So what I'm showing you is you've got God the father and God the son. No trinity. Mm -mm, that's garbage. That's the Roman Catholic church garbage. God the father, which is the most high and God the Son. You understand? He was also called the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Why? Because remember, Christ created us at the command of the Most High. Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon 8, in case somebody is confused about that. We read it in Colossians, but let's just get some more on that. Give me Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8 and verse 9. No, Wisdom of Solomon 9, verse 9. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 9. Mm -hmm. And wisdom was with thee. Whose wisdom is as wisdom was with thee. Give me that in 1 Corinthians 1, 24. And wisdom was with thee. Okay. First book of Corinthians, chapter 1, verse, verse 24. 24. Come on. But unto them which are called, Mm -hmm. both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. You see that thing? Christ is the wisdom of God. So Christ is that wisdom that King Solomon is speaking of. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon 9 now. Verse 9 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 9. Go ahead. And wisdom was with thee. And Christ was with you, the Father. you was with you, Father. Go ahead. And wisdom was with thee, which knoweth thy works. Which knoweth thy works. Which knoweth thy works. Read. And was present 
when thou madest the world. And was present when thou madest the world. That was says, let us make man in our image. That's what we read in 2 Ezra 9 verse 18. You understand? 2 Ezra chapter 9 verse 18. Because we read it earlier. I know some of you forgot already. When it says, and now when I prepared the world which was not yet made, even for them to dwell in that now live, no man speak against me. So that world was talking about what? Man at that point. But what I'm showing you is as wisdom was with thee when he prepared the world. Wisdom was right there. Christ was right there because he was the one that was doing the creation at the command of the Father. Read. A new, pick it up from there. And knew what was acceptable in thy sight. Come on. And right in thy commandments. You see that thing? It says Christ knew what was acceptable in the sight of the Most High. So Christ understood what was acceptable in the sight of his father. You understand? And he says, and write in thy commandments. So Christ knew that. You understand? He understood what, was, what is acceptable, what was acceptable in the sight of the Most High God. He understood that thing. That's why Christ developed a reputation with the father. That's why it says, and the evening and the morning was the third day. It says what? After God was, after Christ created, the Lord came the most high god came behind him in genesis 1 it says and god saw that it was good he saw that it was good he was saying okay that's good excellent all praises let's keep moving to the next one so on and so forth okay so hmm. let's go back to where we was at isaiah 9 verse 6 read it yes sir the book of isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 go ahead for unto us a child is born. Read. Unto us a son is given. Mm -hmm. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Read. Counselor, the mighty God, uh -huh. the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So now Isaiah 9 and 6, the reason why we came here is what we read in second john verse 3 go back to second john verse 3 now because i came here to show you that there's god the father and god the son you understand read what you got second john verse 3 second book of john verse 3 mm -hmm. grace be with you mercy and peace from god the father and from the lord jesus christ the son of the father in truth and love so now we have just seen that there's god the father you understand and what and what and god the son who's also called the everlasting father because christ was from the beginning you understand watch this now now that we've identified that you've got god the father you've got god the son who's also called the the, the everlasting father the prince of peace the mighty god you understand watch this Give me the book of Exodus. Remember what we read in John 1. He says, no one has seen God at any time. Watch this. Exodus 24 now. Verse 9. Exodus 24 verse 9. The book of Exodus chapter 24 verse 9. Read. Then went up Moses and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu and 70 of the elders of Israel. So now this is Moses, Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and 70 elders of Israel. Now these are wise men known among the tribes. They are known among Israel. These are wise men. The Lord has put wisdom upon these men. You understand? Read that again. Verse, verse 9. Read it. The book of Exodus chapter 24 verse 9. Mm -hmm. Then went up Moses and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu. And 70 of the elders of Israel. And 70 of the elders of Israel. Now, before we get that, right? Watch this. We coming back here. Give me Exodus 23. Okay. Exodus 23, verse 20. Exodus 23, verse 20. Watch this. The book of Exodus 23, verse 20. Mm -hmm. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. So now this is the Most High God speaking. 
He is telling Moses, listen, I'm sending you, by the way, I just mentioned something there. The most High God is telling Moses, listen, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Watch this. Go ahead. Verse 21. Beware of him. He says, beware of this angel. Read. And obey his voice. Obey this angel's voice. Read. Provoke him not. Provoke him not. Don't provoke him to anger. Okay, with the works of your hands, which was we. This is what we are accustomed of doing. Read. Provoke him not, mm -hmm. for he will not pardon your transgressions. He says he's not going to pardon your transgression. Go ahead. For my name is in him. Now that's heavy right there. For my name is in this angel that is going to keep thee in the way. When he says keep thee in the way, he's talking about what? The commandments he'll teach you. Watch this. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Okay. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 1. Watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 1. First book of Corinthians chapter 10 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And all passed through the sea. That's the Red Sea. He says, all our fathers were under the cloud and, did all, and all passed through the sea. So the Apostle Paul is talking to the Corinthians, the Israelites scattered in Corinth. Go ahead. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Read verse 2 again. First book of Corinthians chapter 10 verse 2. Mm-hmm. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. He says they were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Keep that in mind. Go ahead. And did all eat the same spiritual meat? You, you see, the spiritual meat is going into the manna that came down from heaven. That also, it also goes into what? They were taught the, the word of God. They were taught the commandments. Read. And did all drink the same spiritual drink? Mm -hmm. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. That did what? That followed them. That's what we just read in Exodus, the 23rd chapter. So the Apostle Paul is giving us the history of what happened. But he's also revealing a mystery of what's going on here. Who was that angel that kept us in the way? That's talk about Christ. Okay. Read that again, verse 4. First book of Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 4. Mm -hmm. And did all drink the same spiritual drink? Read. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. Uh -huh. And that rock was Christ. You see that thing? That rock right there, that rock was Christ. Now, watch this. Exodus 24, verse 9. Now, now that we understand the angel that kept us in the way, when we are part, the Red Sea was being parted and all of that, when we left Egypt and so forth, guess who was among us? Christ was among us. Watch this. Exodus 24 verse 9. Read what you got. The book of Exodus 24 verse 9. Read. Then went up Moses and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu and Abihu and 70 of the elders of Israel. And 70 of the elders of Israel. Remember, these are wise men. Watch this. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 1. Deuteronomy chapter 1. Okay. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 13. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 13. Read. Take you wise men mm -hmm. and understanding and known among your tribes and I will make them rulers over you. So that's the same people that Moses told us that's, that's been spoken of in Exodus, the 24th chapter. You understand? Wise men and understanding and known among your tribes, the leaders of Israel. Go ahead. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 13. Take you wise men and understanding and known among, and known among your tribes. Go ahead. And I will make them rulers over you. Read. And he answered me and said, 
the thing which thou hast spoken is good for us to do. Uh -huh. So I took the chief of your tribes, wise men, and known, and made them heads over you, mm -hmm. captains over thousands, and captains over hundreds, and Wait. captain, and captains over fifties, and captains over tens, mm -hmm. and officers among your tribes. You see that thing? Now these are judges. Moses set up structure, command, and order to set the nation in order. Read on. And I charged your judges at that time, saying, because these are judges. You understand? These are judges. That's what you brothers are being groomed to become judges. That's why you are commanded to study, read, and apply, by the way, not just study, you must apply these things, read. And I charged your judges at that time, say, mm -hmm. hear the causes between your brethren and judge righteously between every man and his brother and the stranger that is with him. You see that thing? So now these, go back to Exodus 24 now, verse 9. Exodus 24, verse 9. Now we understand when it says the 70 elders of Israel, it's talking about these wise men that we just read about, the judges. Okay? Read what you got. Deuteronomy 24, verse 9. The book of Exodus, chapter 24, verse 9. Then went up Moses and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu and 70 of the elders of Israel. These are wise men now, judges, Aaron and his sons. Go ahead. And they saw the God of Israel. Stop right there. Read that part again. And they saw the God of Israel. He says, they saw the God of Israel. Remember now, we just read in verse 9. Is Moses, right? And Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. What did they see? Read verse 10 again. The book of Exodus chapter 24 verse 10. Mm -hmm. And they saw the God of Israel. They saw the God of Israel, read. And there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of sapphire stone, and as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. Sapphire stone, that's the, the hottest part of the flame. It's blue. Okay, go ahead. They are describing the wheels now, read. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also, they saw God and did eat and drink. Read verse 11 again. They did what? And also, they saw God and did eat and drink. He says, they saw God and did eat and drink. They saw God and did eat and drink. Because I know some of you have lost now. In Exodus 23, read Exodus 23 verse 20 again. The book of Exodus chapter 23 verse 20. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Read. Beware of him and obey mm -hmm. his voice. Go ahead. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. So now what we're reading here is that is what? The angel that will keep us in the way, let's talk about that spiritual rock that we drank, the spiritual meat that we ate, and that rock was Christ. Now, what we're reading here is, it says, they said, they said, it says, they saw the God of Israel. It says, also, they saw God and did eat and drink. So, who's this making reference to? Go back to Isaiah 9, verse 6. The book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6. Mm -hmm. For unto us, a child is born. Read. And to us, a son is given. Mm -hmm. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So now, this is making reference to God the Son. He's talking about Christ now, the Messiah. Okay, watch this. Give me Numbers 12. Numbers chapter 12, verse 8. Numbers chapter 12 and verse 8. The book of Numbers chapter 12 verse 8. With him will I speak. You know, about to mouth. You know what? Uh, start at verse 6. You know what? The start at verse 5. This is when Miriam and, 
Miriam and Aaron were flipping out about Moses. Okay. Now read verse 5. Watch this. The book of Numbers, chapter 12, verse 5. Go ahead. And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud mm -hmm. and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came. And they both came forth. Read. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision. Mm -hmm. And I will speak unto him in a dream. So now he's saying, listen, if there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision. And I'm going to speak to him in a dream. Watch this. Go ahead. My servant Moses is not so. Mm -hmm. Who is faithful in all mine house. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, but my servant Moses is not like that. Okay. I'm not going to speak to him in parables and in dreams. Watch this. Go ahead. My servant Moses is not so, who is mm -hmm. faithful in all mine house. Read. With him will I speak mouth to mouth. You see what he's saying? With him, with Moses, will I speak mouth to mouth. Go ahead. Even apparently. Meaning clearly. Clearly. Even apparently meaning clearly. Okay, go ahead. No vague. There's not going to be. I'm not going to tell him anything vague. I'm not going to give him vague stuff. I'm going to be clear when I deal with Moses. Go ahead. And not in dark speeches. Mm -hmm. And the similitude of the Lord shall be, shall he behold. It says, and the similitude of the Lord shall he, Moses, behold. He's going to see the similitude of the Lord. Go ahead. Wherefore, then, were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? You see nothing? It says, and the similitude, that's the part I want to focus on. It says, and the similitude of the Lord shall he, shall he behold. Talking about Moses. He says, I'm going to be clear when I deal with Moses. The similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Watch this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 12 now. It says, the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. What is the similitude of the Lord which Moses will behold? Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 12. Let's start there. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 12. Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. Mm -hmm. Read. You heard the voice of the words, but saw no similitude. Only you heard a voice. You see what he's saying? He says, but you didn't see no similitude. You only heard a voice. So now Moses is repeating the things that happened in the past. He says, you only had a voice. You didn't see no similitude. But he says, Moses, the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. But as the rest of you Israelites, you're not going to see that because what? Israel is dumb as hell. Till today. You understand? Read. And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform. Mm -hmm. Even ten commandments. And he wrote them upon two tables of stone. So he says, is he, is he read, that, read that verse again, verse 13. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 13. Mm -hmm. And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform. Read. Even ten commandments, and he wrote them upon the tables of stone. He says he wrote them upon the tables of stone because the Lord wrote, the, wrote on the tables the ten commandments and gave to Moses to teach it to us. You understand? Watch this. Give me Nehemiah 9 verse 13. Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 13. Okay. Nehemiah 9 verse 13. The book of Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 13. Mm -hmm. Thou camest down also upon Mount Sinai and speakest with them from heaven and gavest them right judgments and true laws, good statutes and commandments. So now he says he gave us true laws, good statutes, and commandments. So there was the laws, the statutes, and the commandments upon the tables. It wasn't just the ten, like you see in Exodus 20, you understand, on, on down. No, it was more than that. You understand? There was the laws, the statutes, and the commandments. So you had the ten commandments, and you had the statutes and the laws associated with those commandments. Next verse, go ahead. And made us known unto them 
thy holy servants and commanded them precepts, statutes, and laws by the hand of Moses, thy servant. You see that thing? By the hand of Moses, thy servant. Now give me Exodus 24 now. Exodus 24 verse 12. Watch this. The book of Exodus chapter 24 verse 12. Read. And the Lord said unto Moses, come up to me into the mount and be there. Mm -hmm. And now give thee tables of stone and the law and commandments which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. You see what he said right there? It says, I will give thee tables of stones and a law and commandments. You understand? Which I, which I have written that thou mayest teach them. Same thing that Moses is saying is what we just read in Nehemiah. Same thing. So those tables of stones, not we didn't just have the ten like you see it in the book now. No, it was scrolls. Okay, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. So thou shalt not commit adultery. It goes into what Leviticus eighteen, bestiality and so forth. You understand? Um, homosexuality, all of that. All of that falls under what thou shalt not commit adultery as an example. You understand? Rape. So on and so forth. Fall under thou shalt not kill. Covetousness. You understand? Now, go back to Deuteronomy 4 now, verse 13 again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 13. Mm -hmm. And it declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform. Read even ten commandments, and he wrote them upon two tables of stone. You see that thing? So these ten commandments is clarified in Exodus 24, verse 12, Nehemiah 9, verse 13 and 14. It wasn't just the ten, it was the bylaws attached to them. You understand? The statutes. Read. And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments that he might possess, that he might do them. In the land whither you go over to possess it. Read, come on. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves, for ye saw no manner of similitude on that day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb out of the midst of the out of the midst of the fire. So now he's saying, he says, he says, You saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb, that's Mount Sinai. Out of the midst of a fire. They didn't see no similitude. They only had a voice. You understand? A similitude goes into an image. Because what Israel is accustomed to do. They, they will create images. They will worship them. Look what happened when the Lord sent fiery serpents against us. What did we do? We ended up worshiping that fiery serpent. Hezekiah when he found he had to take it and throw it and destroy that thing. Because we was worshiping it. You understand? That was, I'm not going to show you no similitude. But Moses, my servant, he, the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Because he's worthy of it. You understand? He's not going to do those. He's not going to create idols out of the similitude and start worshipping it. Go ahead. Let's decorrupt yourselves. Mm -hmm. And make you a craven image. The similitude of any figure. Read. The likeness of male or female. You see, so that's what he's saying. He says, I'm not going to show you no similitude because you're going to take the similitude and you're going to create an image out of it. You're going to worship it. That's the point. But he says, but Moses, my servant, the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Now watch this. Give me the book of Exodus now. Remember, Moses saw the similitude of the Lord. Remember what we read in Exodus. He says, but Moses, in, I mean, in Numbers, he says, the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Remember, it says, nobody has seen God at any time. Watch this. But there were instances where the most High God was seen. But we wanna, we're going to explain in the scriptures, precept upon precept, what he means when he says, no man has seen God at any time. We're going to unpack it to understand what exactly does that mean. Give me that in Exodus 33 now. Watch this. Exodus 33, verse 11. We're going to be jumping around in this chapter. Exodus 33. We're going to start at verse 11, then we're going to jump. The book of Exodus 33, verse 11. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face. He did what? And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face. 
The Lord spake unto Moses face to face. Remember, when Moses was called to Mount Zion, when Mount Zion was on fire, you understand? The cloud, was co the cloud covered Mount Zion. When Moses went up there to collect the commandments and so forth, he spoke to Moses face to face. This is not talking about the Most High God yet. This is talking about Christ. Okay, the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Yes, he saw Christ face to face in there. You understand? But also it goes into something else. Read verse 11 again. The book of Exodus 33 verse 11. Read. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face. Mm -hmm. As a man speaketh unto his friend. Read. And he turned again into the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. Because guess what? Joshua, just like Elisha, he used to follow Elijah around to learn from him. Okay? Watch this. Jump down to verse 18 now. The book of Exodus, chapter 3, verse 18. Mm -hmm. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. Because now, at this point, Moses had developed a reputation with the Father. He says, show me thy glory. I want to see what you look like. You understand? This is Moses speaking now. He says, I want to see you. I don't want to see what you look like. Because there were instances where Moses dealt with the Most High God directly. Watch this. Go ahead. And he said, this, this is this point. At this point, Moses is dealing with the Father here. Okay, he's not dealing with Christ at this point. This is dealing with the Father right here. Verse 18, once again. The book of Exodus chapter 3 verse 18. Mm -hmm. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. Read. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. Mm -hmm. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. So now he's saying, listen. It says, I will make my goodness pass before thee. So now this is the most like God telling Moses, I'm going to make my glory, my goodness to pass before you. But he's going to tell you how he's going to do it. Next verse. Go ahead. The book of Exodus of 33 verse 20. And he said, thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. He says, you cannot see my face. But he says what? He says, they, can no, they shall no man see me and live. Jump back up to verse 11. Watch this. The book of Exodus of 33 verse 11. Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face. He did what? And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face. So obviously this is not to, here the, this what is being explained here. This is not talking about the Mosai. This is talking about Christ. Go back to verse 20 again now. The book of Exodus chapter 33 verse 20. Go ahead. And he said, Thou canst not see my face. Uh -huh. For there shall no man see me and live. He says, you see that thing? So he says, the Lord spake to Moses face to face. Obviously, that's not talking about the Father. He's talking about Christ. Verse 20 is talking about the Father. Now the Father is telling Moses, say, listen, you can't see my face. For there shall no man see me and live. So when he says, go back to John now, chapter 1 verse 18. John chapter 1 verse 18. So we can understand what John was saying. The book of John chapter 1 verse 18. Mm -hmm. No man had seen God at any time. The only begotten son, which is the bosom of the father, he had declared him. He says, which is in the bosom of the father, he had declared him. Meaning what? He showed him to us. Now what I want to show you is that God, John is saying, no man has seen God at any time. What does he mean? Go back to Exodus 33 now. Verse 20. This is what he means. This is the precept the, right here. Come on. The book of Exodus 33 verse 20. Mm -hmm. And he said, thou, can, thou canst not see my face, for they shall no man see me and live. So now when he says, thou cannot see my face, guess what? He says, thou canst not see my face. For they shall no man see me and live. What is he making reference to? To his face. No man can see the face of the Mosai God and live to tell the tale. No, you won't. 
You understand? You will not see the face of the Father and live to tell that day. That's no, you're not going to read that in the scriptures. So when it says, no man has seen God at any time, it goes into what? No man has seen the Most High God's face at any time. Moses didn't see it. You understand? What did he see? Read verse 21 now. Come on. The book of Exodus, chapter 3, verse 21. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. Mm, some heavy stuff being brought out here. Jewels. It says, guess what? It says, thou shalt stand upon a rock. It says, there's a place by me. I'm going to show you a place where I want you. You're going to be standing on. You understand? Right? This is the most I now speaking to Moses. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass. While my glory passes by, that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock mm -hmm. and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. So now the most high God is telling Moses, I'm going to come behind you. I'm going to blow. I'm going to cover your face with my hand. And as I'm passing by you, guess what you're going to see? Go ahead. And I will take away my hand and thou shalt see my back parts. Come on. But my face shall not be seen. You see, that's the key right there. But my face shall not be seen. It says what? It says, I will take away my hand. It says, once I've passed you, I'm going to take away my hand from your face. Okay. And it says, thou shalt see my back part. You're going to see my back as I'm passing. You understand? But it says, but my face shall not be seen. You see that thing? That's some heavy stuff right there. So when John is saying, no man has seen God at any time, what is he making reference to? His face. He's talking about his face. He's not talking about the fact that nobody has seen God at any time. No, no, they have seen him, but not the face. You understand? You can't see the most like God and live to tell it. Impossible. You won't. Now watch this. Give me, give me the book of Hebrews, okay? Hebrews 11, verse 24. The book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24. Read what you got. The book of Hebrews chapter 11, verses 24. Mm -hmm. By faith, Moses when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. So now this is when Moses, because remember Moses was a prince in Egypt. He says, but he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Why? Keep going. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Now jump down to verse 27. By faith, he forsook Egypt. He did what? By faith, he forsook Egypt. He forsook Egypt. Okay, come on. Not fearing the wrath of the king. Not fearing the wrath of the king. That's Pharaoh. Go ahead. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. What did he say? For he, for he endured as seeing him. Who is invisible? He says, for he enjoyed. So Moses enjoyed as seeing him who is invisible. So Moses saw him who is invisible. So what is this talking about? Remember it says, but the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. In Numbers. Go back to Numbers 12. But the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. He says, he enjoyed seeing him who is invisible. Who is that? The most high God. Numbers 12, verse 8. The book of Numbers, chapter 12, verse 8. Read. With him will I speak mouth to mouth. Uh -huh. Even apparently. Go ahead. And not in dark speeches. Read. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. You see that thing? And the similitude, meaning the image of the Lord shall he behold. The most high. So go back to Hebrews 11, verse 27 again. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 27. Mm -hmm. By faith, he forsook Egypt. Go ahead. Not fearing the wrath of the king. Read. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. You see that thing? He endured as seeing him who is invisible. Meaning what? 
He's making reference to the heavenly father, the most high God. Now give me Colossians 1 verse 15 again. Okay. Because we read that earlier. Let's connect the dots now. Colossians 1 verse 15. The book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 15. Go ahead. Who is the image of the invisible God. Mm -hmm. The firstborn of every creature. The firstborn of every creature. So Christ is the image of the invisible God that Moses endured to see. And guess what? The similitude of the Lord shall he behold. He saw that. You understand? He saw the similitude of the Lord. He was worthy enough to see that thing. So when they say no one, no man has seen God at any time, is making reference to what? His face. He's not talking about at all. Is what? No, no. He was seen by Christ. By he was seen by Moses. You understand? Moses saw that. Moses saw that thing. But in Daniel, when he goes, you might thinking, mm, so that means in Daniel, no, no, Daniel saw a vision and it doesn't describe he saw the most his face. No, he saw, he saw the hair on his head. He didn't say he saw his face. He didn't say that. Okay, he don't say that. Why? Because what would have happened to Daniel? He would be dead. Okay. Now, read verse 15 again. Colossians 1, verse 15. The book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 15. Who is the image of the invisible God? Read. The firstborn of every creature. So Christ is the image of the invisible God. Meaning the similitude of the invisible God. Watch this. Hebrews now. 1 verse 2. Hebrews chapter 1. We, gonna, we can start at verse 1. Hebrews 1 and 1. The book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 1. Mm -hmm. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Meaning what? He spoke to us. He spoke unto our forefathers, you understand, at different times in history and in diverse manners. Go ahead. Hath in the the book of Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Go ahead. Had in these last days spoken unto us by his son, mm -hmm. whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. That's what we read. That's the same thing we read in Colossians. By him all things consist. By him, he also made the world because Christ is the one that was doing that. Go ahead. Who being the brightness of his glory. So Christ is the brightness of the most high God's glory. Go ahead. And the express image of his person. And the express image of his person, meaning Christ look exactly like his father. He look exactly. The express the carbon copy of what his father looks like, Christ looks exactly like his father. Read that part again, verse 3. The book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 3. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. Read. And upholding all things by the word of his power. Go ahead. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. So now what you are seeing here says Christ is the express image of his person. The express image of what his father looks like, he looks exactly like his father. Watch this. Give me John 14 verse 9. John chapter 14 verse 9. Because what we are reading in Hebrews, same thing that we are about to read in John chapter 14. John 14 verse 9. Watch this. The book of John. Chapter 14, verses 9. Read. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. Read. And how sayest, they, and how sayest thou then, show us the Father? 
So now Christ is speaking to Philip, one of the, the, the apostles, one of the disciples. He said, listen, how long have I been with you that you'll be asking me such things? Okay. It says, he that has seen me has seen the father. If you see me, you see what the father looks like. You understand? Also, you're gonna, when you see my face, you know what my, the face of my father looks like. Because Philip in verse 8, read verse 8. This is the question he was asking. Okay, read verse 8. The same thing that Moses was asking, Philip was asking the same thing. But at this point, Philip, Christ just gave him the answer like that. Moses, he, he saw the back parts. You understand? When Moses asked, Moses saw the back part. Philip is asking, Christ is telling me, listen, I've been with you. I've been working with you. For three years, Christ walked with the disciples. You understand? And they've seen him for three years. So guess what? It says, you see what, what my face looks like? That's how my father looks like. We are, we are exactly the same. Okay? Read verse 8 now. The book of John, chapter 14, verse 8. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the father. And it's sufficient. It's, it's, it suffices us. Meaning what? We're going to be okay. Just show us the father. We want to see what he looks like. We want to see what your father looks like. And it suffices us. You understand? They're going to be okay if they can just see him. What he looks like. Go ahead. This is the answer that Christ gave them. Read. It sufficeth us. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet thou hast not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. Read. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? He says, Why do you say now, Show us the Father? You've seen me already. You see what I look like? I look like my Father. That's what he's saying right there. You understand? I look exactly like my pops. That's what he's saying right there. Watch this. Give me the book of Acts now. Okay. Give me Acts chapter 7 verse 55. This is our forefather Stephen. This is Stephen now. Watch this. You know what? Go back to Exodus 33. Exodus 33 verse 20. Hmm. We're going pre to preface it with this. Exodus 33 verse 20. The book of Exodus, chapter 33, verse 20. Mm -hmm. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for they shall no man see me and live. For they shall no man see me, meaning see my face. That's why it says, Thou cannot see my face. Thou cannot see my face, for they shall no man see me and live. Meaning, no man will, can see my face and live to tell it. Now, give me the book of Acts now. Acts chapter 7, verse 55. Now, this is when they were stoning Stephen now. Okay, let's start at verse 54. This is when the elders of Israel gathered themselves against Stephen because Stephen was catching them in the scriptures. Okay, Acts chapter 7, verse 54. Read that. The book of Acts chapter 7, verses 54. Read. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. Read. And they gnashed on him with their teeth. They gnashed on him with their teeth. Meaning that was mad as hell. You ever seen somebody mad? They gnashed their teeth. That's what was going on at this point. Read. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven. And saw the glory of God. What did and he Jesus. And saw the glory of God. Remember this, the, watch this. Go back to Exodus 33 so we understand what, what is being said here. Okay. Exodus chapter 33, verse 18. The book of Exodus chapter 33, verse 18. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. So now you see what Moses as, as, is asking? He says, show me thy glory. He's talking to the Father now. Show me your glory. Now go back to Acts now. Acts chapter 7 verse 55. Read that. The book of Acts chapter 7 verse 55. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God. He and saw the glory of God. So Stephen saw the glory of the Father. The same thing that Moses was asking about. 
You understand? Read. And Jesus standing on the right hand of God. That's what we read in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 2. You know, Hebrews 1 and 3. And so he saw the glory of the Father. Not only that, he saw Christ standing on the right hand of the Most High. Watch this. Go ahead. And said, behold, I see the heavens open mm -hmm. and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. So he said, I'm seeing heaven open. Okay. And the Son of Man, that's Christ standing on the right hand of God. Go ahead. And said, behold, the book of Acts chapter 7, verses 57. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord. So now they are going to kill Stephen now. But you see verse 56, it says, I see heaven or I see the heavens opened and the son of man standing on the right hand of God. Verse 55 and 56 is telling you that Stephen saw the glory of the father that Moses was asking about. He saw the father's face. Watch what happened to Stephen. Okay, go ahead. And cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down the clothes at a young man's feet, whose name mm -hmm. was Saul. Read. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. So that's what Stephen was saying. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Okay, come on. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not the sin to the charge. And when he had done this, he fell asleep. Meaning he died. So now, guess what? He saw the Father. He saw the glory of the Father. And guess what happened to him? He died. Because he could not live to tell this tale. You understand? So that's an example of what we read in Exodus, the 33rd chapter, when it says, can no man see me and live? No man can see my glory and live. That's why Moses was only allowed to see his back parts. The most High God showed Moses his back parts, not his face. You understand? Now let's go back to John now. John chapter 1, verse 15. No, John 1, verse 18. John chapter 1, verse 18. The book of John, chapter 1, verse 18. No man had seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he had declared him. You, you did what? He had declared him. He had declared him. How did he declare Christ? Let's go back. Go to Exodus 24. Exodus 24, verse 10. The book of Exodus, chapter 24, verses 10. Mm -hmm. And they saw the God of Israel. So that's talking about Christ. This God of Israel is making reference to here. It's not talking about the God, the Father. It's talking about God, the Son, Jesus, the Christ. Go ahead. And they was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of sapphire stone. And as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. Read. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also, they saw God. Also, they saw God and did eat and drink. They saw God and did eat and drink. So now when he says, go back to John now, chapter 1, verse 18, again. The book of John, chapter 1, verse 18. No man had seen God at any time. Mm -hmm. The only begotten son, which is, which is in the bosom of the father, he had declared him. He had declared him, meaning what? He declared him unto us. So when we're reading in Exodus 24, when we read in 1 Corinthians 10, when we read in Exodus the 23rd chapter, that's how he declared him. You understand? That's how he declared him. But guess what? When the scripture says no man has seen God at any time, it's talking about seeing his face. If you do see his face, guess what will happen? You will not live to tell that tale. The example was what we read in the book of Acts. You understand? But somebody did see him at any time. Stephen did, but he, 
he died. Moses did, but he saw his back parts. That's why he was still continuing with our forefathers in the wilderness, teaching them the law. But Moses did see him. You understand? So I'm going to end the class right here. Okay. I don't want to go too much. That I'm going to end the class right here. Okay. Let's break bread in the honor of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for laying his life down for us, for gathering the 12 tribes of Israel. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed to bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This to ye, as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let the man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the most high hand for that last whole thing.